Hey, Elise. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hi, how are you? Great. How was your day? How was my day? It was actually very, like, productive because it was not like at all. I was very, like, <laughs> I did some cleaning. Like, I literally went and, like, put a whole bunch of clothes and, do, and put them in donation piles, decluttering. So oh, wow. It feels nice. I actually, I'm proud of myself because I'm not the best organizer. And... I'm also not the best at throwing out clothes Um, or just throwing out things in general. I have a hard time letting go of things. So I kind of developed like a little ritual today, which was very nice. Oh, it seemed to work. Is it worth sharing? Sure. I mean, this is, this helped me. So like, cause I noticed like, look, I actually have a family pattern and you know, no offense if my family watched this, just reality. Like there's a little bit of like a hoarding tendency on some of my side of the family and I can feel it. And it actually comes from like a um, impulse. It's almost like a impulse control, things like that. And then I think about mm. when I try to go release things or throw out things, like what goes through my mind. So there's lots of attachment. There could be like guilt about like buying it and never wearing it, or it could hold like a memory. And so, like, I basically, when it came to all the clothes, I, like, made a whole, took a whole bunch of clothes, and then I said, fine, I'm going to, like, I tried them all on, and, like, took pictures with them, so I'd, like, like, I could feel like I could, like, let go and still have a memory. Um, I, like, kind of journaled about it, and just, like, anything that was, like, a difficult one to let go of, I, like, talked about why it would be, and then I... Um, And then I also was like kind of justifying the things I kept. And I actually threw away, like I had like, I have these like bins. I have literally threw away, I had three empty bins. It was a lot of clothes, not threw away. I'm going to donate all of them, but I was like really good. So I feel good about it. That's great. So it was kind of like the same goodbye to these things. Kind of. It was sort of like, and then there's like, I mean, look, I have a pile that's a little bit on watch because it's like a bunch of sweaters and it's like winter. And I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. You got two months. If you don't wear this in two months, throw it away. Or if you just want one last wear, let me wear it. Take some pics. Have a, a cute day, whatever. And then maybe I can let go of it. But if I do not wear it this season, I definitely have to let go of it. So there's a pile that's like, it's on watch. I'm watching it. It's watching me. You know? <laughs> Especially where you are. Night. Yeah, I already had two oh, really? tonight where, like, I put it in a bucket where I was like, oh, I'm going to keep as PJs. And so... When I went to go grab something to wear for comfy clothes earlier today, I was like, you know what? Grab the ones you were deciding that you said you had to keep as PJs. Put it on. Didn't like it. Guess what? Out. Already got rid of yeah, three yeah. things. I'm going to roll. Feeling good. Hi, Michael. Oh, Michael. Why stop? Um, Michael's here. Hi, Michael. I, I thought I saw him popping a little bit. Yeah. I don't know if he wants to come up and talk and uh, share a little bit. It's totally fine Michael, with me. Michael, if you want to come on, you can share about a little bit about our improv. But for those of you that have not heard me talk about Michael, he is my uh, improv partner. We run a lot more better improv and self-expression. So if you guys want to do free, they're free Zoom weekly jams, adult play time, no um, experience required. It's just very fun and casual. Um, come join we are here for it, it sounds like something I might I might want to look into. I think we talked about oh, this before. Yeah. Uh, I, I've never been comfortable in front of the cameras with this part side of the camera. I've always liked mm-hmm. being behind it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's kind of why I, I like coming on live because it kind of forces me to. Yeah. You know? Well, you're doing amazing at it, number one. And number two, the gyms that we throw weekly – they're actually not streamed. So the, the only reason why you're on camera is it's because it's a Zoom and we are, we're not in person. But we do mm. do streaming shows as well. So um, so tomorrow night we're actually doing a, a streaming show that's like Thanksgiving fall festive theme. Again, really casual. Oh, cool. We stream it on Facebook. But um, our weekly jams are actually not streamed usually. And um, it's just like, again, just have fun. Thanks, Stacy. Yeah, this mug I got in Fairfax at, uh, oh my gosh, Good Earth, my favorite grocery store in the world. Good Earth, if you're listening, I'll be a sponsor. I don't care. I'll do it. Good Earth, best, best stuff. Yep. Best, best <clears throat> grocery store ever. But I don't live very close to one where I live. So every time I go out there, I always just like buy a bunch of stuff. Okay, be ready. Here comes a big ass blame. 
a big ass plane is coming in. So. Okay. <clears throat> Michael knows this. Michael knows this. We used to, well, I, we still do, but in San Diego, there's um, a place that we do improv and some like authentic relating and a bunch of other events. And it's right by the San Diego airport. And mm. every time, like when you're doing it, like a plane will go by and you can't hear. So we all use it as like a breath break where like, we're just like, don't try to talk over the plane. <laughs> just deep breaths. But you can like tell everybody's yeah. angst from it. Ooh. Actually, when we moved into this house, when we moved into this house, this property, that was one of the things that was not discussed by the realtor. Um, so we didn't find out until I think the first week we moved in. My son then was two years old. Yeah. And because we have a doorbell, he used to love to go outside, take his little step stool, put it outside the door and ring the bell because mm. it was fascinating to see everybody running to go get the door. But you can tell it's in because it's nonstop for three mm. minutes. Doorbell's mm -hmm. going up. So one day I was at work. Uh, my then ex, my ex-wife was upstairs sleeping. Everybody else was sleeping. My two-year-old went outside, unlocked the door. Hey, Miss V, took his step stool. I started ringing the doorbell, and then the door shut from him, and it's locked. So now he can't get in. And he's trying to pound on the door to get somebody to open up. And my family, they're very heavy sleepers, so pounding uh, won't do it. Oh, no. So my neighbor called me up at work and said, hey, I just wanted to let you know your two-year-old's outside crying in the corner, oh, holding his God. head because a big aircraft was coming over. He was oh. totally totally scared out of his pants so i told my supervisor i'll be Man. back i got <laughs> home and i was like are you okay he's like no the aircraft came out and i saw his steps to us i'm like you came outside to play with the doorbell okay that there, there's your lesson right there mm. i ended up putting a security door with uh extra locks like the hotel type lock so he can't go out anymore oh not not when everybody's sleeping it was yeah. like it was really bad oh, for him, but it was so a lesson. Scary. Yeah. I, I told I him that story well, last year. For, oh, you told him that yeah. story? Oh, is that the first time I ever heard about it? Yeah. I have to say, it's weird hearing, like, the stories of, like, tr like not by any parent's fault, but, like, these kind of, like, traumatic, like, young, because for, like, a, for a very young child, it could feel extremely traumatic. And, again, it, it, what... We only got to get it right apparently one out of three times with kids. That's what, that's what my program teaches me. So it's not a big deal. But mm. I hear ones where like I felt like, and they'll just like nonchalantly say it to them. Like, oh yeah, like that time she fell down the stairs in the stroller. I'm like, what? Like, what do you mean I fell down the stairs in the stroller? But yeah, apparently I was like in my walker up in my grandparents' house, just tumbled down the stairs. No, no biggie. Or they'll be like, oh yeah, or the one time when like she was crying in the back seat we didn't see her because we forgot to tie the the <laughs> the thing whatever the seat what is the child seat to the seat so when they stopped at a red light i got wedged and i'm flailing and they can't even see me <laughs> there's more of these they just pop up like every, you're right every few years they just pop up and i'm like wait what yeah. else happened like what are you not yeah. telling me apparently a lot yeah well it's like i told my parents it explains sense. how i turned out yeah well. exactly <laughs> There was a time I, I have three children, and uh, they're all five years apart. And we had given birth to our youngest. He was not even, ooh, I want to say not even six months old. So my daughter, who's the oldest, came in the house and said, uh, Dad, so-and-so doesn't want to take a bath. <clears throat> Trying to get him to go in the shower to take a bath. That was my, my oldest son, my middle boy, middle child. Yeah. So I... Got to the bathroom. I put my youngest child in his crib. I got to my my older boy. I said, "Look, you need to get in there because we have dinner coming up. So please go take a shower. Get in the in the tub." So they get in the tub. I get him out. He's playing around. I said, "I'll be right back." Because now the baby's crying. My son's in the slippery towel floor. He hits his mouth on the toilet seat, the ceramic seat on the bowl, oh, and tits no. his tooth. Mm -hmm. Oh, it gets better. <laughs> I got the father of the father of the year that day. 
So I was like, oh, no, okay. He's complaining. His eyes sore. Apparently, he hit it in a place where it affected this whole part of his face. He ended up with a black eye a couple days later. Oh, no. So he's bleeding. So now I'm trying to get him dressed. I'm getting my, my daughter dressed at the same time. I'm trying to get my baby into warm clothes. And I have my parents with me. And I said, let's go. We need to go to emergency now. They're like, no, we'll stay home. I need somebody to watch the baby. Come with us. So we go downstairs in our little apartment to our bed. My oldest son is in the back crying. He's bleeding. My daughter doesn't want to get in the car. Put her in the car. I slam the door, and her finger's still inside the door jam. So now she's got two fingers that are stuck in the door, and I don't notice it. And I'm all frantic already. <laughs> so my dad's like, your daughter's hand's in the door. So oh, like, no. Fuck. Oh. So I'm trying to pull at it, and my dad said, just open the door. Don't keep pulling at it. Mm. We take it out. Now it's all black and blue, and she's screaming. My oldest son is screaming. I have my dad call my wife and say, meet us at the hospital. We're going to go to emergency. Got two kids now. <laughs> we get there. I take my baby out, and I don't do a good job of bringing the stroller out of the bed. I hit my youngest son, and they had the baby, the six-month-old, in the corner. <laughs> it's the corner of the stroller in the head. Oh, wow. oh, my and God. now he's bleeding over here. And my, my dad is watching it and he's shaking his head. I got three kids bleeding, three kids crying. Okay, well, my wife is pissed off. You? you walk in the hospital with three ch children. Three I know, yeah. Children. Well, <laughs> put it this way. <clears throat> put it this way. I, I think they were waiting to call the uh, police department. I mean, they... They have to check that stuff out. I mean, yeah, because I have three, I have three kids have three bleeding and crying. That, that's that's a. That's it was a, one of those okay, nights. What did you learn? But what have you learned from it? What did you take from that memory? How does it make you feel now? Not not to have kids in the next life. I think that's <laughs> what it was. Birth control, next life yeah. birth control. <laughs> right, right. But oh my gosh. So we get everything settled. The doctor makes a report, and the cops come, and they want to make a follow report. They Stacey! have to do the investigation. Oh, my God. Sorry. I had to see Stacey's. Oh, yeah. I see that. Yeah. Oh, no, girl. Oh, no. <laughs> so two days later, I'm having trouble with my son getting to the shower. Guess what happens? Oh. Yep. He hit his mouth on the same place. In the same Back place? to the emergency room. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that poor child. How's his mouth now? Is it all? Is he all set? Any any lasting? Uh, he's very. It, we had some corrective dental surge oral surgery done, but his mouth <laughs> can't keep the kid <laughs> quiet. That's oh, a bad man. guess. Oh, well, that's my story. For all that. That's a great story. Well, I mean, it's it's a very entertaining one, but it just shows that like you can have those like crazy bad days, and then look, okay, now we can laugh about it. I know. I, I asked my parents that night. They said, "Has anything like this ever happened with us, with our, with uh, your children, like me, my other siblings, growing up? Anything like this growing up?" And my dad says, "No," but my mom says, "Yes." And then my dad looks at my mom, and they're like, mm-mm. We don't, don't talk think. about that day. Uh-oh. Right. Uh -oh. Don't talk about that day. <laughs> that that uh, explains how well we all turned out, you know? Um, a few people, Stacey. Not many, though. You're most of them, and I'm reading all of them. I would like to yeah. comment earlier when you were like, oh, I, I apologize for my kids, the, the unintentional trauma I caused them. I mean, you're, I can tell you, you Stacey's an amazing mom. So anything oh, that yeah. happens is all unintentional, and everything is, it's all fun. If, it, mm -hmm. if your kids didn't get a little hurt, I feel like it was probably, like, at the sacrifice of them not ha being kids and having fun. So, got to find the balance. Uh, I don't know. I think I think I toppled them up, you know? Oh, yeah. They made it through. Yeah, I wanted to break the toilet, but uh, I blamed the toilet, <laughs> but, you know, <clears throat> I couldn't because it was an apartment we were renting. Yeah. So, okay. It is a few minutes after as well waiting for Grizz, but she said she, she messaged me, said she's going to be a little bit late. So, okay. 
we'll go ahead and start if that's okay with you. Yeah. Okay, cool. First of all, thank you, Elise, for being here tonight, Saturday, November 26th for our three plus me. I thought tonight we do just uh, have some fun, do some readings, get to know other yeah. people and bring some up, bring up some people to the call itself. So if you'd like a reading, go ahead and raise your hand in the chat and we'll have Elise do a couple of readings. I am expecting Annie to show up as well. I know you uh, you met Annie, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. So right, she tell me if the said, shuffling's too loud. I'm going to nope, unmute myself. Good. Yeah. No good. No good. all good. these desks so, earlier, so I need to give them a good shuffle. Cool. Before we uh, get started with readings, I had started something new uh, last week, and I actually wanted to do this last week, but I thought this week would be perfect timing to do it. Mm. And I started reading a book. I started reading this book again. Well, what is this book? Hold on. It's it's. I can't read backwards. It's it's the Bible. Oh. <laughs> started reading it again. I really messed that one up. Oh, okay. No, yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, and one of the things I thought I would do tonight is just maybe share a little bit, and I'll tell you why I'm sharing this first. I read a verse on Monday, and it stays with me for the entire week. It's beautiful. Do you just, how do that. you read it? Are you doing it in order? You just flip and just pull? or? Um, this week, I actually, I had a certain verse in mind, oh, so you but I wanted to understand the meaning. Yeah, it was intense. Oh, beautiful. So you like more study the verse that came to you. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, I actually, I wanted to be a, an evangelist, travel the world, and bring people to Christ. I had this vision when I was, uh, when I was married, when, uh, after my divorce happened, uh, my feelings changed and yeah. I kind of strayed far away from that. Mm. But recently I've been trying to find a different part of me that I've forgotten, mm. you know, uh, to rediscover. Yeah. So I thought I'd share just a couple of verses that I was looking at this week. And it's from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. This is from the um, uh, the NIV version of the Bible. So it's more um, modern version language instead of the these and the vows. So that's the King James Version. Oh, interesting. Okay. I don't understand that version because there's too many, too many vowels and consonants put together. <laughs> I don't understand. But the verse says... Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious. Verse sixteen says, "By their fruit you will be rec you will recognize them." Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? And the last one, verse seventeen says, "Likewise, every good tree brings good fruit, bears good fruit." Mm. But bad trees, they're bad. Mm. So the reason why I wanted to share this particular verses tonight was uh, there are a few people I got to meet this week. Um, one of them was in person. And uh, this person talked a really pretty show. I mean, she gave me such, she painted such a beautiful picture about who she was and what she represents, and basically a tarot reader as well. And she said, uh, I help so many people, and I want to be able to help you, and I'm willing to give you a reading if you'd like. And for me, I'm very, I'm at the point where if I ask for a reading, it's because I really want one. If yeah. I don't ask for it, I, I don't want it right now. I'm not ready for it right now. That's just me. And everybody's a little bit different. Mm. And, uh, this hit me, this, this Bible verse hit me, these Bible verses hit me because of people who are in our community that are here to help others. Our intentions are good. Our intentions, our desires are to help others, to give guidance, to um, share, to grow, to heal. Mm. And uh, Elise, you know this, and so does Stacy. Uh, I'm very, very particular who I allow to be our guest. 
and uh, it's just for me. But I feel a lot of person's energy. I look at their profile. I watch uh, their mannerisms as they do their reading. I feel their energy, and uh, I don't allow sheep and wolves clothing to be a part of our community. I would rather you bring your genuine, authentic self, even if it is the most nastiest, vile person that you are, but you're looking for help. You're wanting help. That is the only condition I have. You're here because you either want to help others to heal or you need healing for yourself. Yep, the world does need more healers. You're right, Yen. You're very right. Mm -hmm. uh, give me one second. I need to grab something. Yep. Go ahead. But I thought I'd share this first because a couple of people I met this week. And I do believe that there are people who have good intentions, who have a good heart, who wants to heal, who wants to show that guidance for those who are looking for it that the traditional means cannot provide or have not provided for them. And this is why we create this community. So we have, we have people like Stacy and Grizz and Yaddy and Trisha and Elise and Annie G and so many others in the, in the community. Thank so you, With Luca. that being said, I, That's so beautiful. I, thank you. I do and appreciate you sorry, allowing me to share. Sorry, I'm going crazy. I'm going a little okay. nuts. Trying to find what I'm looking for, which is, you know, when you just like feel like you literally, well, this is me all the time. I don't know about you, but I literally always feel like I can't find things that I'm looking for that I just had. This is why I've been cleaning out my stuff. Why? Because it keeps me less stuff is easier to manage. Up, oh, found it. Okay. That's all you needed to do is turn on that light. <clears throat> well, exactly. Uh, let me see. So I think um, if possible, if I think it pertains to the situation that pertains to um, what's happening in our lives, I'd like to try and do this on the, on the almost a regular basis where uh, the verses I read on Monday, sometimes, most times it'll be an intentional verse. I'd like to share that with the group, share that with the community. And I know this is not for everybody. I understand that. But this is also my journey as well. It's not just for everybody else in the chat. It's not just for our guests. It's my journey as well, and this is helping me Okay, Stacey, this is helping me towards my healing journey to be able to share mm. something like this. So if you can understand that, I appreciate that. Mm. Did you find what you're looking for? I did. Cool. Um, and cool. then also shout out to Stacey. Thanks for saying that about my reading. We had a we had a good reading sesh this past week and it was really nice to connect with Stacey and her beautiful energy. She did share with me that she got a reading for me, and I was really happy for her. Yeah. yeah. It always makes me happy. These things, I, I, again, so thank you for saying that earlier. I really appreciate it, and that was a beautiful reflection of that verse. Um, so thanks for bringing that in. I just thought in, 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 our, in our community and the type of work and, and help that we desire to do, there are going to be people who come with, with false uh, perceptions or false not perceptions, but the way they they give themselves off with such so mm -hmm. much false. And for me, that's not something that I want to have in our community. I would rather have you just be genuine and authentic. And hey, you know what? We all struggle. We all have have uh, where we fall short. That's what we're here for. We're here to support each other, help each other out. You need help? We're here. That's pretty much what mm -hmm. it is. That's beautiful. So I do know there's about six people right now that I can see. If you'd like a, a reading, I know um, I said it earlier, but if you put your hand up, there is one person in the chat room that 
I would like to call up. I don't think she'll come on camera. Okay. But uh, maybe she'll have a, she'll do one, a reading in the chat itself. Yeti, Yeti is there. Yeti is uh, fairly new to our community. Or Miss V. Okay, Miss V. Uh, well, I got you, Miss V. I am starting the list, so Miss V, uh, let's see. Yadi, would you like a reading, Yadi? I'm being called to your name. If not, we'll, we'll move on. Miss Lee? Okay, Yadi, you decide, okay? Miss Lee, I'm going to bring you up, all right? I'm sorry, I should have asked you first. Elise, would you prefer? Sure. Okay, change plans. Miss Lee, you hang in there. You hang in there. I'm going to bring her up. I was being called to, to bring her up. Yadi, would you like a reading? Uh, would you like to be called up to video? You can block your camera if you want to. I know you're really shy. Mm -hmm. Or we can do it in chat. It's just the, the reading is just going to take longer. Thank you, Miss D. Yes, you're going to go first because I, <laughs> I was feeling I needed to call you up. By the way, this person, I met her. On Instagram, just like how I met you, Elise. And I was oh. actually looking for someone to help us understand crystals. I had a guest that Ooh, would come up with beautiful. crystals. beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And, and have you had that? Um... Not yet. Oh, I can't wait. Because for me, Not it's yet. like... You know, I have the thing, I like tarot is, is something that I study and do intuitively, like more so than other aspects, but I'm, you know, into astrology, I'm into crystals, but I'm like, that's not my, where I put the majority of my energy, I learn as I go. So I'm so excited to see some of these other areas. Mm, yeah. And that, that's and kind of what I wanted to do. I love that. Was to offer so much more than just. I think I told you that, and, and no offense to anybody who reads tarot about it, I don't want to be a one-trick pony community. Oh, no. I want to be able to offer all different types of creators. All of, I really, truly believe it's not just one thing. It's, it's really how all of them integrate together. It's what you're called to. I mean, for me, it's like I have crystals here. I have cards here. I have, like all, I have so many that I use, but I wouldn't be able to teach as much through crystals, right? I mean, so it's... um. I love that we have such a diverse community so we can all learn from each other and continue to integrate. Like the more, like I was telling you, I think maybe, I don't know if we did this on in our um, interviews or if it was just one-on-one, -on -one, but when I was saying how, um, like my tarot readings get more in depth, the more I learn about astrology, the more I learn about numerology, it just creates more of like a richness to the information mm -hmm. that you're reading. So just like the more you learn, the more... Yep you can just integrate all of it. So that's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> lots of tricks. Yeah. I really want to, at least my question though, do ponies actually have tricks? I mean, is that like, what trick does a pony actually have? What's a real, what uh, uh, they can trick? step with their, they can pound with their leg numbers. Yeah. They can count with their leg. They can count with their feet. Oh, really? Okay. I don't know. It's a guess. It was a guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, am I doing a reading for Miss V? Yes, please. Okay. Right. I, I know that if that feels good for you, would you like a reading, or we can, or yeah, yeah, I would. Things. I would appreciate it so very much. Oh, I'm so grateful, and I'm so honored to be able to do one for you. And I feel like I've seen you as a pretty much of a regular, so you're really comfortable. Um, having readings like on video and okay. And just know that if something comes up and you want to talk about it offline, I'm here for you and here for support okay. after this as well. Just okay. you never know what comes out and what we feel comfortable or what, like even like our guides feel comfortable bringing into like more of like a live reading, but cause it could just be vulnerable for you to open up like this for everybody, but for the good of like having folks understand like what all of this is about. So thank you. Because for me, the age that I am, I'm at an age that I don't care what you think about me. I'm not trying to be offensive to anyone, mm. but I'm also trying to live my best life for me. 
That's beautiful. And I really like when you say that, like, you know how true that feels. We can all feel that truth. And that's a beautiful transmission of just like owning your own truth, which is just so mm-hmm. beautiful. Mm. So thank you for bringing that. Is there anything um, specific you want to um, to cover or just general messages or what? Well, ge- a general, because I believe that if general is out there, then whatever I'm thinking of will probably yeah. come up. Okay. Mm. All right. Well, then let's see. So I read pretty intuitively. Um, and um, so we'll see what comes up and what either gets channeled off of some of these cards or the readings, but I'll just see what messages um, are present for you. Wow, I wanted to come out real quick. Okay, so Three of Swords. And so we're talking about the heart space, right? And that's where I feel like we're just being called to point out is like, what's going on in the heart? And mm-hmm. you know, the Three of Swords is a card of heartbreak, of pain. But for me, it's like this depiction, it's like, it's like a boundedness. It's like a binding, right? So it's sort of like um, a restriction. So you can even sometimes like feel that pressure, that restriction in your chest when like something comes up. But it feels like I want to say like, it doesn't necessarily feel, it, it doesn't feel like a, something new. It feels like something that's almost like um, opened up a scar. It's like, you know, when you're healing and then it like gets reopened. <laughs> so there's some like new blood to it, but it's mm-hmm. really more about processing something from the past. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I feel like once this is done though, and I almost feel like this, this message of like, whatever came in to open this up again, it was a catalyst because it was time to let this go. It's time mm-hmm. to let this one go because you're going to feel so much more open. And I feel like you're being called right now on this heart opening, right? Like it's time for you to really be as open as possible for you to receive because mm-hmm. it's time for you to be ready to feel all the love that you give out. And you do, but there's a deeper love. And there's always more that we can receive and feel. And I see you being someone so feel love giving. And you also see the love around you and you receive. But there's this part here that if we can heal this, and I feel like it keeps getting poked at it because it's like we got to get, it's time. Mm-hmm. Yes. It, um, okay. Everyone else in the room knows I had a husband for 44 years. <clears throat> so it's a lot that I have to keep, that I keep dealing with. I keep saying I'm letting it go. I'm trying yeah. to move forward. And then a memory will hit me. Mm. And then it'll lock me back into him. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be locked into him like, you know, I'm going to be here alone until it's my time to go. Yeah. I don't want Yeah. I want to be able to open up my heart and love someone, but I also want someone to love me. Mm. Not just for the physical part that you can get from me. Yes. All of me. Yes. Mm. I feel that so true. And I love how it's coming through so strongly in terms of how much like you are only willing to accept love that is authentic and that is a soul connection. Mm -hmm. You're not, it it really has to, it really is more about soul connection and someone really connecting and having the capacity to connect with you as you can connect with others because you're at a certain level and you're at a certain vibration and you're at a certain level of openness and maturity, like soul maturity. And you're looking for someone to meet you there or maybe Mm -hmm. even like help you even take you somewhere else, but you're not necessarily going to settle. Yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah, the hermit here. So I don't know um, if you have heavy Virgo in your chart or if you would be connecting with the Virgo, if there's Virgo energy, but for me, for you, it is almost like this little bit of what it's almost like what your heart's doing. I feel like (laughs) it's like (laughs) kind of like turtling a bit, but see this flame and this is the flame of desire. And I feel that's what maybe is 
is could it's like something to bring you out of your shell there has to be a level of something and that's kind of like what when i think of the ace of wands and it has that energy almost where it's like like when you clear some of this heart space that's where we feel like the dynamism that's where we feel passion inspiration but for me it's like desire is like the life force force energy there has to be something that pulls you out that like that is in craveable in some way it doesn't have to be like when we think of a craving in a negative way it's like but in some ways it's like that is what moves us right so for me i'm kind of getting this message though like as soon as there's a little bit of space there could be something that feels a little fiery but again you're also going to have that discernment that says okay like is it just this little bit of fire but the fire sometimes is what kind of gives us that little bit of a oof right it gives us that little bit of a kickstart so i can see that and this is so interesting. We have the four of wands and the five of wands right next to each other. <laughs> so, ugh. I mean, four of wands and the five of wands, that's what's interesting. Because the four of wands is the card of marriage, stability, celebration, right? And so we've talked about a little bit of that past. And then so with this five of wands, it's sort of like, um, I'm hearing the words like, no one can compete in a way, like, but at the same time, I feel like, look at this five of wands, though, because mm -hmm. usually they're all wrapped up with each other and in that bound. And now it's sort of like there's this space. And that's kind of like what the message is. It's like even like just like just a little space, like when you just have that little bit of space to let this just like tiny little flame come in. That little bit of space can just open up enough room just for that little that first bit. Mm. And then okay. when that first bit happens, you keep having choices mm -hmm. all along the way. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be from zero to a hundred. It's like a little bit of space and a little bit of release can let a little bit in. And then you get to decide, no, I'm gonna go back on my show. Bye. You don't have okay. to, you don't have to <laughs> get that flame lit. Because um, I've been dealing with two. Mm, okay. And one wants to, okay, like I said, I'm 66. So I don't have a lot of time. To, for me, it's not a lot of time to waste. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm getting ready to leave the planet, but I'm 66. So you're very you intentful know, of where you put your energy. You're not going to just invest yeah. your precious time. And none of us should, but you're like, I've realized this lesson. My time exactly. is valuable and precious. I, he, putting energy into something that's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, if, if it's not going anywhere, if you're not really thinking about taking me where I, where I want to be, then I need to move on. Absolutely. And so underneath the deck here, you have this ace of pentacles behind the three of pentacles. So like underlying it is, yes, where are you going to put your energy? Where are you going to put your pentacle? Like for me, like sometimes the ace of pentacles is like literally where you invest and then with this three of pentacles it's like it's something that has a solid foundation it feels like an equal partnership in a way right it's not just one it's not just the red right it's not just the it's not just the flame it's not just the passion it's also when we look at the four of wands what does the four of wands represent it represents stability celebration um, commitment of any kind, right? And so, as you can see here, it's like this Three of Pentacles is calling for those three colors too. Yes, this passion may start it off. It may start off there, but we also need the other two elements or we need the potential of the other two elements because that's what feels, that's what feels worth it, right? And when I say worth it too, not just that you've learned in terms of like how precious time is or your time is, but how precious your energy is. Mm-hmm how precious your energy is. And I feel like you're yeah. coming into that realization so strong of this self-value, self-worth, your truth. It's a beautiful energy. And I feel like I just keep like, I hear like the like people getting rooting you on. Like, yes, yes, yes. Like, I just feel like so much support behind you. Like even like literally behind you, I feel so much support. And just like, just like, I don't know, just like a lot of just like, almost like when um, I'm seeing like when people are watching a sports game and they're just like kind of like really excited and rowdy and just like so much life and just having so much fun. Like that's how I feel like they're watching you. 
with just okay. like they're <laughs> like you're because you're like you're caught the pass and you're like running towards the goal like there's nobody in front of you and they know you're gonna have a touchdown like that's what it feels like yes yeah, son of cups to end this off here this knight of cups this this is coming in this is like delivering a message of love but it's because like it's almost like in this one it's a still Knight of Cups. So cancer energy, water sign energy. So it could be a water sign coming in. But for me, this represents your openness. It's also like the law of attraction. It's like this intent of like, I'm open and I'm ready and I'm going to allow what, um, allow what is meant to come in to come in. And I have the intent to receive openly because I know that all my actions and all my thoughts are in the right place in terms of I'm telling the universe exactly what I want and what I deserve. And mm -hmm. I, and so it's sending me exactly what I'm looking for because I'm being very discerning. Pacific. Yes. I'm being and you're showing it every day. I, yes. I don't want, I don't want no BS. <laughs> oh no. And you're not. And when BS comes your way, that's my point. You're basically hitting a thumbs down. I almost, I think I, me, me and Stacey talked about this too, literally. And I'm, I'm kind of all about this where it's like really like being intentional when something comes towards you, that isn't an energy that you want in your life or resonate with. It is about shutting that down in your most beautiful way possible or how you have to handle, you never know the situation, but we need to actually show no, we need to show the universe. No. And then they're like, okay, got you. Sorry. I won't say that song yeah. in your playlist on you again. My bad. It's like, don't keep playing with me. Don't keep acting like if you say you're looking for the same thing I'm looking for, mm -hmm. and the conversation goes another way, I don't have the patience for that. I really don't. And you have the awareness, and maybe in the past, and it could have been in the past too, that you've always had this awareness and this instinct, but you you didn't leave soon enough or you didn't recognize it soon enough. And now it's like this self-trust and there it's being reiterated. Trust yourself and we see you doing this now. As soon as you get that feeling where it's like, nope, I know this. No, I'm not going to let myself get deeper because you are so sensitive and so loving. You can. I'm not saying you can fall in love with anyone, but you love everyone. Like you can find the love in everyone. You can find the good in anyone. And mm -hmm. trust me, the, there are people who know that and can play on that. And so you're like, a, it probably was hard in the beginning to really do it. And it still can be very hard sometimes, but it's, you're being called to be like, put up that sword in your beautiful way that you do. Mm -hmm. And um, so you don't kind of get the entanglement that can keep you somewhere longer than you want to be. Mm -hmm. because this this daughter wants this page of wands is coming in with this little spark and i love this because i saw the judgment card right when we were before we the reading and we were talking about choices and it's like you have the choice every it's like baby steps this lover's card with the page of wands it's like these you have a choice every step of the way and follow your heart follow that that feeling and this eight of wands i mean you're moving you're moving there's movement, there's communication, maybe. So I just feel really good things coming in. Um, and um, I just hear everyone, I just hear so many like support systems. Like, they're just like, yeah, like I just like, like, I'm like, I hear you, like, just cheering you on. So proud of like, just so it's like, it's like they're rooting for you. You have like so many cheerleaders. So. Well, I'm so glad for that. I'm glad to know I got some cheering going got on. Got a ton. She's getting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a ton of cheerleaders. It's so beautiful energy. Your energy is just so beautiful and radiant. Mm. Oh, thank you. Is there anything else that's come up that you wanted? Or do you feel complete in this? Or Huh? Do you feel complete in this, or if there's any other questions or any clarification? Uh, the only to do it question too. I am concerned about, and that is my finances. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Let's pull a message on your finances here. And I can also see the cards too. I mean, this Ace of Pentacles and Three of Pentacles card that was underlying the deck too. You know, there is a message here in terms of also. I don't know if you've been, again, like waiting for a new opportunity or something's been taking a little bit slower, but I feel like there's something, I'm hearing the word, there's something brewing. There's something brewing that I think is the start of something. Okay. 
Let's see though. There's also an element of like putting yourself out there too, like more, more putting yourself out there even more. Just like again, that hermit energy is was kind of in the center of your reading, so it has a lot to do. It could be showing up in multiple areas of your life, um, in terms of like you know, where you're putting your energy and if you're kind of closed off to some energies, maybe. And again, it could, this one could be a little bit more not as obvious or like at the surface in terms of like the, your energy. Ooh, Eight of Pentacles. Okay. Interesting. This is such an interesting Eight of Pentacles depiction. So we asked about work and we're getting the Pentacles. And for me, like this spider... It's almost like a tunnel vision card because Eight of Pentacles is one of mastery, right? So you've reached a certain level in something, right? Like you kind of have reached a pinnacle of either um, one area of your career, one stage of your career, one stage of your finances. But now it's like the, 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 the spider's like in the middle and he's like, there's a couple ones I get on this. One, reflecting on everything you've done. So if there's ever like in terms of the energy you're feeling in terms of your finances, like more of a... Like, uh, an abundance mindset. It's like one, take a look at all this web you've built. Look at what you've done. Look at and all the experiences you've work. gained. Start, start and it's going, it's going everywhere. It's going everywhere. That's what I'm yeah. saying. You've done so much and you've come so far. Sometimes you can get caught and not see it because you're like kind of at maybe like a, a little bit of like a, a plateau or like what's next or maybe again if you ever have self-doubt but it's like one take a look at everything you've built all the experiences all the transferable skills don't um tunnel vision yourself in terms of like where you ended because there was all this experience and everything for me especially like where how where i'm in my career and what i see I've always been a fan of transferable skills just because you don't have an experience in one thing specifically. There are so many skills that you need or that are served in so many different areas. So it's more like, look at the, it's an abundance mindset in terms of all the different things you can get into. And it's also again about following the desire, following what makes you feel alive. And so as you start looking at, you know, other certain options or doing more interviews or whatever it is you're looking at, right? All these different opportunities, check in with yourself. It's, I'm almost getting the same analogy as when people want to start going to the gym and working out and they're like, oh, well, what should I do? Or how should I do it? Or which one is the right choice? It's the one that feels so good that you're going to get up and do it all the time. Because if it feels like, if it feels like work, it's going to be draining. And I really do feel like, again, what I'm hearing is with your skill set and who you are um, and all your gifts, you are able to find a way. You, you, will, you will find the one that can give you both, right? It's more about like putting that out there. Yeah, Nine of Cups, both, right? Like your fulfillment as well as this work. Eight of Pentacles, Nine of Cups is like a beautiful, fulfilling um, a way to create money and abundance in your life. So I do feel like, I mean, you have amazing Pentacles cards, Ace of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles. So I feel like, and the Nine of Cups in this piece, I just feel like it is about moving towards, and I think the financial abundance will actually come from where you feel you can put the most of your true energy because you'll feel connected to it. So it won't, like the energy, it's, um, I'm getting shown like, um, Okay, you know, like, I, I, work with me here. I see, I see visions and I have to describe them. So, you know, when you're at a carnival and you're playing that game with the, where there's the water guns and then it's like the balloon and it pops. It's sort of like the way when you find the one that like you have more of the desire to, you feel that connection. It's almost like you're not, move, it's like you find the line and it's like your energy is so efficient that you don't have to use as much. It goes very quickly when you get the burst. So it's mm -hmm. like you actually there'll be something that you can connect to in a certain way where the finances come very quickly. Like you'll see a very quick gain and then that'll be a sign is what I'm hearing. Okay. From that. All right. Yeah. That's what I'm getting. And just, and then on the bottom of the deck here is just, oh, wow. Two fire energies, two Leo, <laughs> very Leo driven energies. So strength and the King of Wands, just be confident in this, like be confident, know your strength. Like, and just know confidently be in the energy of this will, this will come like that energy will bring it in. Okay. Well,
so very much for your time. Thank you so much for letting me read you. You have such a beautiful energy. It was like very easy and you have a lot of guides around you and folks that just are a very that speak very clearly for you, with you. So it was like a very it was very easy and beautiful to read your energy. So thank you. Okay. Well, I appreciate mm -hmm. my my guys that are around me helping me out so Oh, very. they are. They were like they have like jerseys with your name on it. They're just like, <laughs> number one fan. Like that's what I really like. Yeah. I, I literally feel like right now like, I see like a couch full of people where there's like popcorn and chips being thrown. Like yeah, they're like a little rowdy. Like, it's a little rowdy, but in, like, a really fun, like, a live way. Like, that's the energy I get. Because, you know, I know I have much more life to live. So oh, you do. <laughs> that's why when you were saying, like, I don't have all my time. And I just kept, I literally heard a voice that was like, hell no. <laughs> it's like, no, nope, that's not true. Or no time soon. Yeah. No, no. That's... I'm trying to get to a better place physically for myself. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's all coming, love. I feel it for you. All right, then. Well, I'm going to let someone else come up and get their turn. And I sure appreciate you. Thank you so mm. very much. Thank you. Thank you, Miss V. You're welcome. Talk to you. Uh, I'll be down at the bottom. Mm. Thank you. I appreciate that. For those of you just joining tonight, welcome to Saturday's 3 Plus Me. We are doing readings tonight. We are not going to do a whole bunch because I want to make sure that I respect the uses energy as well as your time because readings can take a lot out of you. Mm. can take a lot of energy out of you so at least i do have four on the list but i think we're going to end up just doing three more if that's okay with you sounds good i'm gonna see you, you let me know how you're feeling I gonna, okay i feel good i'm gonna um I'm going to clear a new deck while we're just like clearing some energy. So I'm going to open. I actually, that was the perfect amount of, yeah, because I did, I have a few decks I cleared fully, but I can always be cool. using the same decks, but I just feel like it'd be nice transition to just do a little bit fresher energy. Okay. I did have someone earlier. Uh, I think she did leave the chat. So uh, we're, it looks like we're going to have Cleo and Tanya and possibly one more. Uh, okay. But right now I know we have these two. And I will be calling them up shortly. For those of you who have just joined tonight, for those of you watching replay, we are here with Elise, the Modern Mystic 222 on Instagram. If you are not following them, thank you, Stacey. If you're not following her, please make sure you do that. She does daily mini readings, I like to call them. They're little snippets for your day, and it's like a, it's like your little power boost, like your little energy drink before you walk out the door. It is good to have oh. these in the back pocket. So. I like that Thank about your you. readings. I mean, it, that has definitely, as I'm shuffling this, I can just kind of speak to that. It's definitely evolved. Like, I started off doing much longer readings on YouTube, and I really love doing a uh, digging in, but I do like, um, it has worked a lot with my, it's just, it's kind of worked out where I kind of got a good form of those three minutes that I feel like are digestible just to get, again, those little messages out, but if I can find the space with some of the other stuff I'm going through, um, or I, I dabble in that we've talked about. Um, I, I am trying to do a little bit more longer readings because I do love just like diving in. But like sometimes I would like start a reading and I'd be like, oh my gosh, that was like a 30 minute reading. And then, you know, YouTube loading and stuff. It's like, sometimes it caused me more stress than it was worth because like, yep. it takes like all day to load these things. And it's like a whole thing. Yeah, four so, days for a half an hour video. I know. I got gotcha. you. Seriously, I'm just like, oh yeah. man. So thank you, YouTube. Okay. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I was there one day. Here. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it is, it's a test. For me, I'm a Pisces. We're not known to be the most patient signs. <laughs> but I'm working you're, on it. You're right with there with maybe Taurus. Maybe Taurus. It's Taurus. I, 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 I know specifically being a Pisces that I'm not patient, and I've heard that often, but our Taurus is known for that as well. Uh, my brother's a Taurus. I, I think Stacy's a Taurus as well. Stacy, Taurus. Believe me, I'm, I'm, I'm not throwing shade at you because I haven't seen that side of you, but yeah, my, my older brother, he can be like, very impatient. And it's hard to change his mind. Thank you, thank you for going through it. Oh, Michael. I like Michael. Michael has been a Michael has been a fan of my tarot readings. Well, he had no choice because when I first started my channel, I was he was letting me stay with him. This is a plug for any us. Uh, 
this isn't a singles champ, but I'm just saying Michael's a great guy. And just, you know, and he let me stay with him twice Tom a month a when I would go down to meet with to meet with um one of the teachers I was meeting with at the beginning kind of of my my journey, my spiritual journey. And so Michael let me spend like multiple weeks with him a month. He would always give me his bed and he would leave pillow mints on my his pillow for me. I come in wow. pillow mints, pillow chocolates. And he was just such a great, he's such a great friend, such a great host. But he used to, so some of my earlier YouTube readings, you'd see me at his kitchen table during readings. Oh. But he's always been a fan and he would like, he watched my videos before anybody. So, and he always supported me in my tarot. So thank you, Michael, for even being here now and supporting me in my improv. Michael's just like the best. <laughs> he is. Yes, you did, Michael. You're the best. Yeah, he's, he's one of those that he doesn't like attention drawn to him. I can feel that. Uh, he he pretends he doesn't, but he's a Leo rising. He does. Yeah. He's actually a stand-up comedian as well. He's a full. There it is. Comedian now. He's a. That's full that's the energy. Live your dream, people, because Michael was just like, I'm going full on stand-up comedian, and he's really funny, and he's great, and he's killing it. So. Love you yeah, you, I mean, you're, you're never too late to follow your dream. I think somebody told me, told me that about a month ago. Late. Never too late. This, oh, this community, what we're doing tonight, I dreamt about this, and I am over the path, over the age of 50, for those of you who may not know it or believe it, I'm over the age of 50. And I dreamt about this community, and we're doing it. We're living And you're it. doing it. Oh, I love that. Mm. There's but one thing I is... say that Michael does not pass the test on. I mm. woke up to him. Okay, sorry, Michael. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on blast here. I woke up at seven in the morning. It's seven in the morning. I'm making coffee. He's eating a salad. You don't eat salad at seven in the morning. Comedian. Dude. Michael. Michael will eat the leftover sushi at seven in the a.m. in the morning. He'll eat whatever is in the fridge. He has no discernment between what is a breakfast <clears throat> food and what is not a breakfast food. Michael will eat anything for breakfast, and I think that's his only fault and i don't even know if that's a fault it's just something about him that i make fun of <laughs> on live for the eight people watching but michael yeah salad right that's what i'm saying it's just like lettuce is like the thing that i like i just feel like there's just like i can't imagine waking up and then just putting lettuce in my mouth i know i can't stop you because i would look at you weird and you just keep eating <laughs> He sounds like right. a, sounds like the perfect guest. That's what he sounds like. Oh, he's oh he he's very interesting. Come down here, yeah. He, Michael just Michael misses me. I miss San Diego too. I'm gonna come down there soon. <laughs> All right, my deck is All pretty right. cleared. I think. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, bring up Cleo. Cleo, you're gonna be next. Mm. Yes, well, thank <sighs> you, Stacey. I know, right? It's like one of those like Caesar salad packs, and I'm like, really. Oh, God. I mean, now I'm thinking of, like, an avocado toast. I'm like, I guess. Hello. I just feel like lettuce. No. Hello, Cleo. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm good. What time zone is it for you? Um, It is just after midnight. Okay. So you're, like, yeah. three hours ahead. So it is a late night reading for you. Okay. Yeah. I'm so in Canada. Oh, Canada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love Canada. <laughs> is there any, um, way too many, Michael. Is there any, um, anything specifically you want to dive into in this reading? Um, just how the year is going to go okay. if, and what should I be focusing on? Okay, um, I love that. Like, it's more so my financial situation, just like, the last reading, okay. that's what uh, con is my focus area of concern. All right. So we will mm -hmm. dig into the year ahead energy around finances in particular, but we'll keep an eye out for anything else. I'm actually going to pull one of these um, energy archaeology oracle decks because I feel like sometimes when we're doing something for a little bit like for the year, uh, like a nice like oracle energy will be nice to kind of like see what comes out. I love this deck, by the way. This is a new deck, so I'm learning it. So I'll definitely read it. There's um, some snippets we can read, but it's a pretty cool deck, and it really links um, 
like the quantum physics energy to like the actual physical body energy. So it actually links it to body parts and how it manifests mm -hmm. like in like certain areas of the body. So it's really interesting deck. I like it. I love Oracle decks that like teach. And then I'll give you the same um, um, spiel that I gave Miss V. But, you know, obviously, like, thank you for being, like, open to do this on screen. But if something comes up that you want to touch base on, you know, offline after, I am totally available for you um, after this anytime, tomorrow, whenever. So just reach out if there's something that comes up that you want to talk about offline. Okay. Since you're so gracious to share your energy with everybody. <laughs> and me. All right. So let's see. <clears throat> for Chloe, what do we have for the energy for 2023? Give me an oracle energy. Around finances. Oops. Okay, that one. To, so what we're speaking was refinement. So there's something about focus. Like I like honing in on something. Like, um, let's see. All right. So we have supporting left foot. Oh, I love this. So here's this card. I'll go grab the book. So we'll start off with a little bit of a message from that. I'll channel off this a little bit though. But there is this element of like putting down some level of roots, right? So you see like the support, how like one foot, it's almost like the temperance card. In the, uh, yeah, I'm getting temperance cards vibe from the support too, because you have like one foot in the water and one foot on the earth, just like she does in temperance. So it's like a little bit of Sagittarius energy, which is ninth house, which is a mm -hmm. lot about learning and maybe even some additional education possibly maybe to, so maybe even it doesn't even have to be anything big, but it's like dipping your toe in, in the water here, or there's two things happening. It's like dipping your toe into something a little bit more creative, a little bit more, that feels like in flow or something new, right? Like something you're emotionally connected to, but at the same time, planting some roots, right? Like something that will feel supportive that even could just feel, um, it could feel mentally supportive, like in terms of like just giving you the confidence to like feel like you can approach something new. Mm -hmm. um, but also I feel like there's this element of even like balancing um, maybe the investment in. So it's sort of like, a, it's like a timing thing. It's like a pacing thing I'm getting to. So it's like, how do I put some finances into investing into the foundation that will help me produce the finances? So it's like a little bit of this balancing act of trying to find the right balance, but I see it coming. Like that's what I'm saying. I really see a beautiful supporting flow. There could be something specific that comes in for support. So let me grab the book. Yeah, visioning. Um, just also this visioning card on the bottom of the deck. It reminds me again of kind of the death card, um, Scorpio energy. But I really feel like there is something also about like actual visualization. So I don't know in terms of like types of manifestation practices or meditation practices, but like really visualizing is like a really, um, could be a really good thing to cultivate or hone in on for 2023 in general, in terms of anything you're trying to like actually seeing it sitting and, and imagining like what mm -hmm. it feels like, what it looks like. Um, let me get this book. Okay. So left foot supporting. Let's see. So it says, Support is not only connecting to resources in the physical and etheric realms, but balancing them as well. Trust they both will flow. Interesting. So that is what's so interesting that we got the visioning card. So I do really feel like it is about like um, bringing in like, uh, there's this like moonology card that's like the Pisces. I think it's like the new, the full moon or new moon in Pisces. And it's like literally balancing the spiritual and the physical the spiritual and the material. And like, I feel like that's what's happening here for 2023 is like really finding that balance between um, what you connect to spiritually, what you also manifest, like what you see for yourself. And you like, I really feel like this vibe of like feeling something is for you or feeling something is coming or knowing that there's abundance, knowing that there's flow, knowing that things are going to, it's going to just come naturally. But then like, there's just like this little bit of like, this like slight disconnect, right? And it's just like literally about like, how do I just that little, it's if you're not far is what I'm seeing. Like I'm seeing like, you yeah. know, when there's like those earthquake movies or like an earthquake and it's something and you see like the, the stuff moving apart. 
it's actually yeah. like moving together and it's like really close. Oh. Like the two sides are really close, I feel like. Um, so this card is all elements, earth, water, fire, and air. So I just feel like it really encompasses your whole energy. It's, it's all of, you'll use all of you in whatever this is. Like, and so it, um, I'm trying to, so when it's in balance, it's rooted, grounded, and firm. So when I see like all, it's all elements, it really is something that, again, you feel authentically connected to. So anything that feels forced is just, it. There, this flow is so important. Like you see the water and it's flowing. It's not even rough water. It's almost like when you just like, there's like a stream and you just like stick your fingers and it just flows through. Like it, there isn't going to be an element of forcing. And I feel like the message is like really, a, like, like it is that more feminine surrendering energy to be in anything that feels forced isn't is is gonna have some resistance to it or there is a resistance with that okay. um because when this is out of balance this energy there'll be a grasping a repelling or a shaking so anything you're really holding on to very tightly or anything that you're like stay like stay oh, be aware of that um let's see i'm gonna see so here's just some supporting questions i'm gonna read this bottom part um, support is not only manifesting resources in the physical and etheric realms, but balancing them as well. To do work in the physical plane, you need physical support. To do work in the energetic realm, you need energetic support. To move between the two, you need to trust your connection to both. And I think that's where all the elements come in. Um, so yeah, I, I like this message. I, I really like this. I feel like that, again, is a theme. There's going to be like this balancing act theme, but it feels really positive and really supportive. And again, I do feel like a lot of energy will come from your third eye, though. So it's like, although it's all elements, I do really feel like the visualization aspect of it is really going to help. Um, I get a lot of earth energy from you, though. Like, I do feel like you have, like, good earth. Um, so it's just about, like, maybe doing both practice. I don't know where you feel like you have more energy or maybe in both, right? Like, you might have, I feel like a really good balance of, like, realm and earth, which is, like, really nice. <laughs> Um, balance. Okay, so seven of cups. Hearing a little bit of that reaching, it's a little bit of confusion, right? So seven of cups energy, again, it's like almost like which option or what do I do? Um, I'm feeling like you can be drowning in something. So I don't know if like, I feel like this is a little bit more current energy, right? It's sort of like, um, like it could feel overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Right. So sometimes you can feel very overwhelmed and what you do in terms of like acting from that or like how you feel like you need to react, it might be keeping you a little bit more in the short term I'm getting. So it's like um, when so, like, so for example, and this may not be your situation, but like if, if like there was like a bill that came in, you're like, oh my God, I forgot this about this bill. And now like we're in a little bit more of the emotions and now it's like, what do I have to do now? And maybe you, it's like instant, it's like short term fixes or like where the focus is in terms of how you can emotionally react to something could be contributing to some of this. And so what I feel like the message is and what we're going to, what we're is moving out of is actually finding some of these grounding practices or finding a little bit of that stability first. So when this, when some of the overwhelm could come, it'll counteract it, right? Look at the, cause it, for me, this, this is a little bit more of like, it's not, there's a, um, it's a little bit of illusion, right? Like it's not necessarily really the reality of what it is, but it, it you feel it, so you, you valid, like what you're feeling is true, but it's clouding what actually is happening. It's not as bad as it seems is what I'm hearing, right? Like, um, oh. yeah, four swords. So it's sort of like, again, balancing out the mind, taking some space, taking some rest, even just like, like finding um, a mindfulness practice in those moments before taking certain actions can really help with this balance. Yeah, six of swords and nine of wands. So there is this element of like the six of swords because going from the seven of cups to the six of swords is like amazing energy, right? It really, but that tells me that in order to clear some of the emotions that could be clouding it. So a little bit more of like the sacral shock, a little bit more of like the emotional reaction. It is an element of like releasing in the mind, 
right? So the story, the narrative around it, the, well, oh no, if this happens, then this is what's going to happen. It's like that linking the two together in terms of, I feel this way. Now there's this narrative that comes in that says, well, now this is going to happen. And now I must do this, which is causing this resistance. So I feel like it's, this is like calling to a specific possible pattern dynamic yeah. to be aware of where it's like, when you have the emotional reaction, what story do you tell if, and if you can release it or give yourself a little bit of spaciousness, a little bit of non-judgment, like, and so there could be so many different ways to, um, to approach this, but that will kind of open up this nine of wands, feeling like you're always constantly pushing up against, like, uh, just put, it's almost like um, you use all your energy on the pattern. Right. So like then mm -hmm. when you go to take the action, there's not as much energy left because I always see this one where it's like he built this great fort, this eight of wands, and he built it with all the strong wands. And now when he wants to go forward, it's like he has only one left and it's not powerful enough to break through what he already built. It's like you're the all your good energy is going to more of the, the story and around it versus putting the roots. So it's like kind of like trying to like redirect the energy and realizing like there's a, there's a place that it could be more productive here. And like, um, so I, I feel like that's what's coming through. Yeah. Two of cups, which I love right now is um, law of attraction to me. Like it really is about trying to, um, so uh, I, I referenced this the other day. I had never seen the book or the movie, The Secret before. And it's really, you know, it's like the basic fundamental principle of law of attraction, but it really is. If we're focusing on what the bad can happen, if we focus on what and not what could be, really, it really does feed into where are you putting your energy and where, what are you telling the universe to bring in? So there is being called this law of attraction energy and this tower card right behind it for me I love the tower in this deck because it is to me this is a shift like he's being reborn here there's a consciousness shift of and like sometimes we see these patterns and like the first time that we even just have awareness to it and we we see it and it, it plays out in a different way boom like sometimes it's all you need is one glimpse of it and you just get that shift so in I feel like the year ahead in terms of finances you're gonna have a shift in terms of how the visioning, your mindset, like mm -hmm. where you're putting your energy, like that it's really about like an internal mental shift that's going to bring this abundance and this stability and this balance, which I feel like is, it's going to bring in this confidence. Like, look at this queen of wands. Like you're going to show up like freaking fire. Like knowing that, like now she has a big enough wand to break through. There's like no more resistance. And she's looking straight at this two of cups. And possibly even the way that I put this in, bringing in a, a very good tower, a very good shift, a shift out of the seven of cups. It really is like amazing energy I see. Um, let's pull one more. Um, but I feel I kind of want to clarify almost the two of cups because I want to see if they'll give a little bit more specific in terms of like what you're pulling in because – I feel like it really is this like shift in yourself and you're going to feel, I'm almost even hearing the, it's like, there's actually more even here already than you can see because of some of the fogginess, right? Like there actually is quite a lot already built. Um, Page of wands. I wanted to come out in reverse, which is very interesting. Let me have a minute on it. That's what I'm saying. This is, um, I love this. Page of wands. You're thinking much bigger. Because you have the queen of wands here. So you've skipped the mm -hmm. knight. So this page of wands verse, it's like, it's also about like thinking bigger. Don't think small. Don't, uh, don't, like, I'm really hearing this very clearly. It's like, there's a little bit of thinking too small. Like you're actually way more experienced and have so much more experience than you're giving yourself credit for here. Like you have already leveled up beyond the page of wands and the knight of wands. You're the queen of wands. You should be embodying, I'm hearing like, based on, what they see it's like you should be embodying the queen of wands because that's where you're at that's where you're at and maybe there's the the um hangman was on the bottom so you could be coming out of like maybe a, a, a period of learning or gaining a lot of wisdoms feeling like just kind of like a little stagnant but 
you've learned so much along the way you have or you have so much knowledge to give like you literally have so much wisdom within you whether it be I feel like already just naturally your connections like you know so much whether you've studied it or not like you know because you have access and so like embodying that queen of wands energy and confidence is what is going to just kind of almost like manifest it in like in the physical because you already have it you already have it yeah there's three pentacles three three under the deck I really with judgment I really um I feel like you have an element of also like not just it's like I feel like it's like stepping into being a teacher knowing that you have the experience to teach even you have enough experience to be training teaching like you, you're not a student you're not a page mm -hmm. you're you're a queen and so it's really like, and that's the energy, whether it's the energy you'll be stepping into and that's what this shift is, it could be a very huge shift. Like this shift could just, it's like, you just like get, you know, like in the video game where it's like you up level, like multiple levels all at once. It's like a really big shift that you could feel. Um, or it's more of like, again, still point to the fact that you, like you're already here. There could just be this like internal process to work through a bit where you'll really feel into it. Um, or and and you're being called to really embody it because it's true so I feel like the earlier you can feel into this queen that you are right now the quicker all of this will come in but either way I feel like it's coming I think you actually can have a little bit of control of the pace that's what I'm getting is there anything um specific that you want to clarify no that actually that was really good Oh, that was so really glad. good. Yeah, really you touched on it. And yeah, I mean, that's uh, one of my problems is that I was writing down some of the stuff just in case you were wondering. I was looking off here. I was just writing down some of the stuff. But uh, when you said actually um, not too long ago, I'm like, I think I am thinking too small. And, mm. uh, you know, I need to think big. And there was a little clip I saw of a man giving advice to some kids. And he said, you know, my dad gave me the best advice ever. And he looked like he was very successful. Mm -hmm. And he said, my dad gave me the best advice ever. And um, he said, how big would you dream if you knew failure was, was an not option. even an option? Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that is totally coming in. It literally is like dream big. Like, and with the visualization card, it's so true. It's like, like there's no risk in dreaming big, especially when you're trying to attract something big yeah. to you, anything to you. So it's like the bigger you can dream. And it is about letting go of the fear of the failure piece. Right. And that is definitely a part and narrative that is ingrained in so many of us. Right. Yeah. And how how would you dream if you know you couldn't fail? Yeah. Because that's the thing we always think we can fail. Mm -hmm. But what if I feel like think that does yeah. is it, it makes us take our energy. It, it literally, again, tells the universe a different story. It's yeah. Like, just oh, a I mental, just that little mental shift. It's just this. This one little shift can like, it's boom, it's tower and it's boom, it brings it in. And I'm telling you, if you've never, I mean, again, it's a, it's a pretty quick watch. If you've never watched The Secret, it's on YouTube for free. And I only, I only watched it because I literally, a few tarot readers I listen to regularly in the same week mentioned it. And I was like, this is crazy. I guess I have to go watch it. And it was such a simple method that for those who'd seen it years ago, they're like, oh yeah, The Secret. I'm like, go rewatch it. Because it really yeah. just, right there in your face simply explains the law of attraction in such just clear ways where it's like you know i what? have to rewatch it yeah yeah so yeah but yeah um i'm so glad it resonated love and i feel so much like power from you i feel your fire and i feel your earth energy as well like you really have beautiful earth and earth is actually fifth chakra right so like earth energy oh. um there is like the because a lot of um, like earth energy, at least the way that I see it, because it is a groundedness, yes. But it's also like seeing the connectedness, like the structure of the universe. It actually is a higher 
chakra. So it's like, you know, when there's musicians who just like can feel into the patterns, it's like, it's the patterns, the universal patterns and like tapping into it and the structure. And like, you have such beautiful ways of having like feminine flow or creativity and all your gifts, but then actually putting like structure to it, like actually taking your big ideas that could be like, so like, you know, like, um, abstract or like people would, but you actually can either synthesize them into words, synthesize them into a, a process, organize them. Like you have that beautiful dual ability, that mm -hmm. balance of earth and water, that creativity and structure that is, I'll tell you, I don't like, I am very weak in the earth. Like I have so much of this. It's mm -hmm. really hard for me to sometimes put it on paper or write it down or organize. And I feel like you have both, which gives you like so much amazing manifestation ability. And I just mm -hmm. keep hearing like, you got it. Like you have it. You have a gift. It's a really unique, special gift that you're going to be able to just bring. Um, little, just this little shift. That's it. It's like one last hook. It's like, you're so close in that like and again you're still you have it all right now but it's like it's like when you unhook that it's like you have no idea how big it can be yeah okay can yeah. i can i back up just a little bit elise yes so what i was really focusing on was what you were talking about focusing actually yeah where we focus on energy and uh sometimes we we're misguided or misdirected to give our energies towards the part the the part that will is supposed to get us there and not let's see the preparation of the battle and not the battle itself. If that makes sense. Mm. Thank you, Stacy. So we we are so focused on the battle's got to go like this. So this is the only way we can win. If we can't win, and then we find that we start talking ourselves out of it before we even begin the fight mm -hmm. because right. our energy is all focused here. And it's like that eight of wands. I think you held up that card. Nine of wands. Yeah. Nine of wands. Resistance. Yeah. Where we built this huge, beautiful surrounding this, uh, this fort that's supposed to protect us from whatever the harm, the battle. But then we take a little pea shooter stick into the war. There's no way we could win. We've already defeated ourselves. And I think a lot of us do that right off the bat before we even give ourselves the chance to fight the battle. Mm -hmm. We talk ourselves out of it. Yeah. And, and these, this, and, and I just want to um, emphasize too, it's like this, this is a protection mechanism that has served us when we were young. We didn't build these patterns out of nowhere, right? We built them because when we were very young, no matter what it was, like there was something that like maybe we felt like if we failed love was conditional like there's so many different things that could have been produced unintentionally right but it all of these blocks that we feel they are protectors and so a lot of the times showing them like the like seeing what they do for us and what they have done for us and not and they will still serve us but it's about in certain aspects like asking them to like honoring them and thanking them we're not kicking them out Right, but right. Like honoring these parts of us that protect us, and then asking them for a little bit of space. And again, same message: the little bit of space, this little bit of space, can just boom, and then you get the glimpse, and then that protector steps aside and does a new job because this is a freaking strong protector. It does amazing stuff, and it can do so much. All of our parts will serve us in so many ways. It's just right now it's doing a job of keeping this little one safe that's afraid of maybe failing, for example. Oh, right? I see. Okay, so asking for space and stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not to yeah. actually remove. I've been doing some tapping work as well. Ooh, to, yeah, like, I love that. Stuff. So that and also releasing and stuff. Yeah. So see? It's yeah. just kind of like giving it up. It's This is like such a surrender of like, swords like narratives it's just like it's a it's almost like that choice um but when i was talking about the protector parts you can also like even if you research um just the concepts for me all i did was just read a book in terms of the internal family systems ifs parts work it just will give you a high level of the different parts and you see that we have these protectors and managers that are really trying right. to serve us 
but sometimes they can be inner critics. They can have like a little bit of like a mean way of managing us. And, uh, yeah. but it's, it, they, they're doing it for our own good. It's just sometimes they don't realize we've grown up. Like we're not little ones anymore. We're adults. Yeah. And it's just about kind of talking to them and be like, Hey, I love you, but back off. Can you not, <laughs> can you yeah. not right now? <laughs> yeah. Come back later. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Amazing. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thanks for letting me read to you. Your energy is so fire. Like, mm, I'm just so excited for you. I feel such good things for next year. Perfect. Thank you thank so you, much. Cleo. Thank care. you. Thank you, Luca. Bye. You're welcome. For those of you just joined, those of you watching the replay, again, we are here with Elise. Elise, I have your last reading for the night. So okay. I'll give you a little bit of time to kind of get yourself yeah, re uh, re energized if you need to. Um, we are here every Saturday, or we try to be, and the holidays are coming up. Uh, I am working on a project that's going to involve a few tower readers, and it's probably going to be uh, a two-day event. And uh, I'm hoping uh, that it'll be as successful as we need it to be or want it to be. Uh, but it can only be successful if the people from our community, you people watching, people watching the replay on YouTube are here. Uh, following us, make sure you check out our YouTube channel, The Only Elephant in the Room. Right now, we've got about 19 videos, I believe, up uploaded. We try to upload at least one or two a week, and we're doing pretty good at it. And I'm more happy that there is uh, Last Call for Mystic. I like that. Michael. We need to bring it up. Oh, Michael, um, when he's, we're going to have to bring him up one of these days. Yeah. Definitely. Michael, Michael, but, uh, when, when I was doing tarot, Michael bought his own tarot deck as well once. And, well, he has a tarot nice. deck that he uses. Nice. Nice. I actually, I, I think I said this a while back, and I still am working on it. I haven't really put some time into it lately, but I would really love to put together a tarot deck of my own with, a, Me too. with an elephant theme. With an elephant theme. <gasps> I was also just going to see the little elephant. I yeah, like, I like that. Around. Every, now, I every like time that. I see elephants, I think of you. And I've been getting so many messages of elephants lately since I've met you yeah. in general. But cool. it's such a beautiful spiritual uh, spirit animal, the elephant. Cool. Yeah, it is. It is. I'll read it tonight. Elise, the modern mystic 222. She also is on Instagram and on YouTube. If you are not following her, you see what she is capable of doing with her readings, intuitive readings, but she also does little mini readings every morning. That's one of the, you're one of the people I actually get up and watch. Mm, that makes me feel so, that like brings like so much joy to me. Thank that you starts that. my day. That means very That starts special. my day. Oh, it thank does. you so much. And then I read all my 30 messages that I missed the night before because now I shut <laughs> my phone off you're very popular. I turned my phone off. Imagine what your inbox looks like, Luda. Uh, well, there are certain people I kind of like. Uh, I don't. I don't want to read your messages right now because every time I open your message, it it starts my day off on a really negative tone, and I I, I can't read that. Anymore. <laughs> so I wait till lunchtime. I do have a pretty. Right. I do have a pretty. Oh, certain messages. Oh, okay. Luca didn't respond to me for about 20 hours, so now I know that I'm in that but I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I joke. No, my, I my excuse is I turned I turn my phone off. That's my excuse. That's good. That is a really good um, practice. I am not that good at that. Well, I do put on – I actually have my phone on Do Not Disturb most of the day, so I don't get notifications. But I do proactively check at a very high rate that I would say mm -hmm. is too high – for my own good. I would love to maybe set a little bit of intention for 2023 to have a little bit less, in, a little bit more, I'll say this, a little bit more, in, I'm going to go more instead of less. I wanted to have a little bit more impulse control when it comes to my phone checking. Okay, then how about this? I'm going to help you out by not messaging you, messaging you so much. Then. Maybe but that doesn't help. once a month. We'll do once what? a month. <laughs> That's so mean. Like, I don't like no. this at all. Yeah, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, I like that uh, sorry, I did see I your message. I saw the lovers come out. That was a bad uh, choice, it would say. <laughs> we don't like that choice. Oh, uh, anyway, 
There's messages wanting to come tonight, out, but I'm still going to shuffle a little bit more. Yeah, please, please. Tonight is actually really, it's just a really let your hair down, just come on in and we'll just have fun. We'll just, uh, yeah, we'll just have fun. Michael, we'll just, Michael uh, says he's about to eat a breakfast out. salad, so we're definitely Yeah, I saw that. Him. I saw that. Michael's one of those, you don't need to leave the light on for him when he's staying in your house. He'll find his way around. He just follows the red dot, the, the blinking uh, microwave time. He knows where yeah, he Mike is once he sees that. I, you know, Michael, I, I don't know what type of sleeper he is. He he slept on the couch every time I was there, and he seemed to sleep fairly well. I don't know. I would try to sneak out or make coffee in the morning. He was He's an early riser, though. Michael's an early. Well, not anymore, though. He switched his schedule because he started doing, you know, stand-up. So it's late night nice. for the club. Nice. He's, he's a late night guy now. So I don't know what's going on over there. Haven't been, I haven't been uh, in, I haven't stayed with him since he went, so much since he went full time comedy. The, uh, I did stay with him when the... he was, I did stay with him more when he was in his job that was a lot of spreadsheets. He was a little yeah, bit I got after it. spreadsheet day. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. But we'd have the best sushi. Shout out to whatever that sushi restaurant is in San Diego. They do, get this riceless rolls but instead of rice they put the like, crab in place of where the rice would be oh wow so it's so and i don't know why not enough places do this but it is like even michael likes the riceless rolls better than the rice rolls at that place it's so good it's decadent it's rich and, uh, it sounds rich it's, ri it's delicious crab there, it's i don't want to it's yeah. so good oh my gosh all right i'm getting closer that's fine. I just want to make sure Michael says, fully shuffled. I sleep Michael well, says, I sleep drool. well, but there's drool. I'm, I'm kind of a drooler, too. I'm not going to lie. It, it kind of explains to his energy Lynch. tonight. It, it explains his energy tonight uh, that he does. Uh, he's gone back to doing his uh, gigs at night at the club. Yeah. He's taking on taking on the role of the heckler. Well, he, thank you, Michael. He's a nice heckler. Thanks for being the heckler. Oh, yeah. Keeping oh, yeah. the light and breezy in the room. I like it because he actually stayed this time. Last time he came oh. in and he left. I think he was, he might have, but honestly, a lot of, it depends. I think he had some visitors. But Michael mm. is a, I appreciate you sticking around, Michael, and hanging out. Oh, really? So, yeah, I'm telling you, I'm always a drooler. <laughs> you know which pillows are mine. I really need to, like, honestly, for my own good, I actually should just use, like, I can't believe I'm playing it, whatever. Put dark, dark pillowcases, because then I know it's like, look. This is an issue. Wash your pillowcases. And so others know it's my pillow for the sake of their face. Because I don't know, man. I don't sleep well, but when I do sleep, I drool. That's how I know I had a good night. Hair, hair's the trick. Hair's the trick. Coming from a drooler, hair's the trick. Hair. Get off-white pillowcases. Off-white pillowcases, you can never see it. You can never die. Yeah, but then you don't know. Then you're not, like, really, like, then it's just, like, it's hidden. It's, like, it's hidden drool. You're just you're just avoiding it. You have to face it head on. And be like, there's drool. Yeah. I don't really care. Honestly, like I said, if I if I wake up and drool, I know I actually slept. And for me, I'll take it because I don't sleep well. Not lately. And I also wake up during like the witch. I, I really do wake up at like three in the morning every day, every night, minimum. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Is that really a thing? Mm -hmm. Because then with I'm, me, I, I'm in a very drowsy state, and I will get, like, I, if I really, in, if I said an intent of what I could probably hear during those times, it'd be. For me, I have an excuse. I'm old. We don't need much. Three hours of sleep, we can run 15 hours. You are, you're only doing three hours? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Solid three myself. hours. I'm like an hour, I'm like an average of five, maybe. Oh, oh anything past seven, I get... I get headaches, I get migraines, I can't stand up for long, I don't like it. I don't like oh, it. Oh, man. All right. I feel like I'm clear. Right. Okay, let's go up and go ahead and bring up the next person. Tanya is the next person. Um, Elise? I, I, I Forgive me for not introducing the last two and where my head is. Oh, no worries. There she is. All right. Let me just move this stuff out of here because it gets me all. Hi. So this is Tanya. Hi. This is Tanya. Tanya, this is Hi, Elise. Tanya. Elise. This is Tanya. Hello. Nice to meet you. 
Nice. Thanks for letting me read you. I'll give the same spiel. I know we're on live and this is recorded. So, you know, depending on what you feel comfortable sharing coming out, but if there's anything that comes up that you want to talk about offline, just send me a DM after and I can definitely talk okay. you through or do any clarifications. Okay. Um, other than Elise, that, I'm going to step away for just a second, okay? Sure. I can handle the room. Thank you. You, you got um, it. <laughs> So, Tanya, um, is there anything particular you want to dig in for on this reading? No, you picked the deck. Okay, and then is there any questions specifically? Mm, that outlook for 2023. Okay, we'll do an outlook. All right. All right, let's see what wants to come out. So I'm going to see just general messages for what you need to hear for 2023, some general energy. All right, well, you're coming out right off the bat with this Three of Pentacles. So I love this card because it's really, one, it's like an element for me of like, I still feel like very foundation and connection, but it's like more of a connection in terms of like, um, it could be in the workspace, right? So this could be speaking of any sort of partnerships or even colleagues, coworkers, connections that you have in terms of um, work or finances. But I'm also getting a little bit of, I want to pull another card on this. I don't know. I'm getting like an energy of like, I don't know. Do you like gardening? Yeah. Or like nature. I feel like a little bit of gardening. Like I feel like you're literally planting seeds or harvesting something, or like maybe spending more time, yeah. like you could be very talented at it, or maybe teach people about gardening, or learning more about gardening, but I see like there's this element of, um, you're going to put your energy in something, like I see yourself like getting your hands literally dirty, like literally in the dirt planting, I feel like it could be really nourishing, and like the way that it balances out your energy can really like it's going to impact more than just what you grow actually you feel, like it really feels right like it, it, embodying that energy and really getting more into the earth is going to like be very soothing and very productive for you yeah all right yes new beginnings transformation card so there could be a scorpio um around or you could have scorpio heavy in your chart um or it could there could be just a, I feel like just, um, this could be a year of change for you. And maybe that's why we we're being called to this three of pentacles, because I feel like there is this essence of this is good transformation. Look how vibrant it, this is. For me, it feels like if there's changes going on, it's going to feel very dynamic. It's going to feel very alive, but it could feel like a lot, right? So there could just be a lot of things moving, changing, excitement, um, just more. I'm getting just like more fun, more variety I'm getting too, like not the same thing. But it's good to have right. a, a foundation of stability as you go into uh, a, like a, a era of change, right? So I think like, again, anything that grounds you or that can like, you know, like that place where you can just kind of like be doing something and you just get into a meditative state where you're not really thinking, but you're the energy, you're really, a, it's like a, a nourishing activity. That's what I feel like this three of pentacles represents. So it could be gardening, but it could be anything that feels really nourishing and kind of puts you into that. Because some folks meditate in stillness. Like they really do get nourished and they practice it where they're like, they sit and they, they meditate. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I, there are the activities that I can do where even today I was clearing all these decks and I was just putting them all in order. And like, I was like, not even really thinking thoughts. I was almost in equanimity where like thoughts were coming in and I wasn't really, and it was just, and I was just doing at the same time. So, so gardening or things like that might have that meditative way with you and like resonate more than just like sitting on a mat. So I feel like that's what this represents as you approach this um, change during the year. Now let's see if we can get a little bit more on this change because this is a major arcana card. Hmm. All right, two of wands. Yeah, so definitely, 
tell this is a part of travel. This is a part of change. It could be a part of visualizing some change, some movement in your life. But it's like, it feels like almost like I'm hearing like taking the bull by the horn. It's like she's grabbing the wand. And so it really is this kind of like, um, I'm getting this very strong energy, like kind of standing your ground a little bit in terms of like where you feel like you should go or feel like you should be heading. It's, it is a very confident energy and it's also, it's interesting. So I see the eye on her third chakra, which is like your, it's like your third chakra is like your identity center, your confidence, right? Like your true, like what, what you feel is true to you. It's also your gut. So it's like where your instinct is, right? So like where our intuition is, is really in our gut. So it is about like also following your gut. You can have a lot of options or there could just be, again, a lot of things moving during the year. And so when you pick up these wands to figure out which way, because two of wands, you're trying to, you're sorting out a direction. You're making plans, right? It really is, I'm getting this clear message of like following your gut. Like you will know where to go. But like really look for that indicator of what one feels true to you. Like don't compromise. If something doesn't feel like it's for you, it's not for you, right? So it really is like trusting right. that, trusting that element. I feel, I see... I see almost, it's like, I can look at this and see the moon in the background or the sun. So I feel like there's going to be this duality of like really releasing. It's almost like a, oh, okay, now I'm getting shown like these images. I'll describe it. It's sort of like your, the emotional release during this transformation, what you face, what you look at. And again, there's a vibrancy to it. So there's this aliveness catalyst, right? There's fun. I feel like just, it's like, wow, I haven't had such, it's like exciting, right? So there's this excitement, but it, it could be a catalyst for processing or moving away from certain things, releasing certain things, releasing certain emotions. I see the star healing, right? Really um, shifting. But that's almost like the jet fuel. So it's like, it is the sun and the moon, right? It's like the moon, like that release is almost like the fuel to joy. It's like you're really headed into a very joyous year. I feel like the year will have a lot of joys with possibly, you know, some endings. But in this case, it's so interesting. Because this ending card looks like the um, Scorpio card, right? Or the transformation card. So there is an ending. There will be an ending. But I don't, I feel like there will be some release from it. Now you, I don't feel like this is anything surprising. Like, I don't think this is something you're not aware of that's maybe cycling out or that you could envision maybe a cycle closing. So, but I feel like, um, Wow, it also is also like reframing this or what comes out of it, you'll see. This ending is, you may be on the cusp of it. It could be something, again, or the, that starts already has started. But when this cycles in, this year is about taking this and creating something new. Look at all the vibrancy that comes out of something that had no vibrancy. This tennis sword, there was, there was just nothing. There was no life left in whatever this was. And like now it's like, look at like how alive how much, how much choice, how much abundance of energy there is. And I feel like it's like, it's, it's like there will be, there will be choices. And that's where like, I feel like it's not like there's like a wrong choice or bad choice. There will be choices. It's just like, it is your choice. And it's about like what feels truest to you and what direction you want to go. King of Wands, a lot of fire energy, Ari Leo Sag energy, very confident I mean, it's so interesting. And I feel a lot of, I feel a win for you. So look, we go from the three of pentacles to the four of pentacles, right? So, and see how she's wearing one pentacle, like a reward. It's like, you're keeping one for yourself. Like you're earning something this year, whatever you go through, it will feel like, um, like you earn like that medal, right? Like an accomplishment will happen here in terms of your foundation and stability. So I see there being like an inner stabilization and you working through this change and being guided towards inspiration, like following your gut, choosing what's right for you, and then building confidence and coming out. Like, again, like you earn a pentacle throughout this year, but a big pentacle, a major pentacle. And look what's right underneath, king of pentacles. 
a lot of masculine energy here too, possibly, because you have like a king of wands and a king of pentacles, so earth sign energy, um, fire sign energy. You can have them in your chart and it could be just your, again, masculine energy. We have both. And it could be really you embodying a lot of this more masculine energy that really takes charge, right? Really takes action from this feminine intuition, right? Like really, again, following your gut. Right. But there's this identity center. Your third chakra is a masculine energy center. So I can see you tapping in this year into that, that really that strength that you have. And that's how I felt. Even she, this was a feminine depiction here. But she's like, so I see this balance of your softness, your beautiful feminine energy with this like kind of go-getter attitude. It's, and it's really focused because also like, again, there's this, this abundance of joy coming in. I see fun. Like I really see fun and joy. Um, oh, and the Empress. Woo. And look at this, a major growth cycle. And that's you just... Wow, just really sitting comfortably, I feel like, by the end of the year. I really do feel like you feel a firm foundation, and you'll feel um, really stable. Um, and, like, kind of just, like, it's sort of like that energy of, like, at the end of it all, just, like, sitting there and be like, okay, mm, that was fun, and now I just am going to go put on some PJs and snuggle into bed. Like, that's kind of how it feels. It feels like you kind of come into the year a little bit, like, a little bit of this, like, uh, and then there's just like, whoa, this is an amazing ride. And then it's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna take a bath. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it, but then you're, then you've landed. Like, that's what I'm hearing. You right. really land, and and then you stay there because the Empress, once she lands, I mean, she's staying. Wow, Wheel of Fortune, yes, yes. Walking straight into this, this is a major shift. This is a major year for you. You're going to really land. Start at the Three of Pentacles and really land somewhere. I, I feel that for you, love. Okay. Is there um, anything that you want a little bit extra info on or any specific questions or clarifications? No. Not really. I can't think of none. Okay. Well, it's really beautiful energy for you. I really feel it for you um, strongly. And it's just, it feels like just, a, a, it definitely feels like not a boring year, but in a really, really good way. <laughs> well, it sounds like it's going to be a roller coaster. A, but like, again, one that has like a lot of... Um, it's like you might be on, you might be at like going to, again, like it's like I'm seeing like a, you go to the amusement park and there's so much, there's a lot of adrenaline. So I'm saying you're not going to feel drained. There could be, if anything, you'll feel a little bit more of intensity, I feel like. So you're not going to feel like lackluster and everything that you move through will have some level of adrenaline because there's fun and excitement or newness to it. As long as you follow your gut, right? Like if you go towards the things that you're going to feel connected to, you're going to have, like, you're going to be like the Energizer Bunny. And then and then you'll land somewhere where you, it'll feel like home. Like, you'll, like, land in a place, and that's right. where you'll settle. So it's like, I, I do feel like, and I don't think it's this whole year. I just feel like going into the year, it could be, let me see, um, let me get old timing. Let me do one part on timing. At minimum, by... I, I, let me see, because I do feel like you're starting off the year with a lot of this adrenaline, and they're actually saying start off the year like building that foundation, finding your nourishing activities that will keep you like nourished and re-energize you during this period of change. But again, so nine of cups, the moon, and eight of wands. Okay, so I feel like anywhere between like again, you'll start like the first couple months you might be coming out of this, and I feel like right. the, the call is cultivate those garden the meditative activities the nourishing activities right and then this so this cycle i was seeing nine months because i was seeing scorpio season so i feel like this will be like nine months of like some again it's dynamic but there's vibrance to it it actually is a lot of fun the eight of wands is again eight weeks so i've seen the two of wands two months so i feel like yeah i do feel like cancer season could be really um I feel like cancer season could be uh, a major milestone as well. 
Um, I feel like there could be a choice in cancer season with this moon card behind this two of wands. So I feel like the first couple months you'll be settling in. Then there could be some change that approach, but again, excitement, like up, you're on the roller coaster. Like we're going to the amusement park. We're having fun. There's adrenaline that could bring again in cancer season, a, a decision in a direction. And that's where there could be again, some more change. But I still feel like, again, as long as you're connected to it, you're going to have momentum and energy. I feel like next year could feel like it flies by in some way and then you'll land, but you'll have some, you will not end at the Empress. I feel like you're going to have a good chunk of time, at least, some chunk of the year where you're landing and feel really comfortable. Okay. Yeah. It's a really beautiful, like this world card, I just feel like it's a beautiful year for you. I really feel like a beautiful year of fun. Like I really feel fun. Like I, I get a lot of vibrancy, a lot of not boring, but you have all really positive. Like it's really like, I don't like calling cards good or like labeling, but it's really like, energetic and very like really like um positive abundant energy so i love this i love yeah, it's it. a good reading it's really beautiful it's yeah it's reading. a really good reading yeah well thank you mm. so much absolutely i'm so um looking forward to your year and I'll, again if you have any questions or something that comes up anytime just okay. me i'm here for you okay Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Thank you, Luca. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Wow, that was a that was a great reading. I like that. That was a beautiful reading. It was a lot of like specific messages coming in. I really, I have to just credit you for just um, holding like such a safe, like a really like uh, energetically, really clean I, I guess that's how I call it like the energetic space that you hold in this container is like really um clear because like messages are coming out really clear and we're like streaming cool. and there's so layers of energy like you just you hold a really beautiful energetic like protected safe container that is just allowing the messages to flow really clearly so thank you for your beautiful energy. I think you you have a lot of earth too. That's like grounding me and keeping me feeling really comfortable. So I appreciate that, your energy. That's the elephant energy. <laughs> really. It is. But, it really is. Like it feels amazing. It really is such a beautiful space to do this. Honestly, I could not, I could not be <clears throat> as successful and I, I want I want to say we are successful. I I need to claim that. You are. But I, yes, I could I not be as successful as we are right now in this space that we have if it wasn't for the two people that helped me with this community and that is Grizz, Jade Tiger and Stacy Michelle. Stacy Michelle Gillery. Absolutely as our Thank partners and moderators. Because they are also holding this space container, mm -hmm. and I just yep. have to give credit. Like we can, I could be the most intuitive, whatever reader in the world, and if the container doesn't allow a safe, clear, energetic space, it it wouldn't be the same. So you guys hold such amazing energetic space. This is such a beautiful container for this, that, um, and to share. That actually, it really it validates what we are trying to create, what we are creating. It really does. Yeah. Mm. Um, and for me, it, I, it tells me that we're on the right track. Yeah. You absolutely are on the track. You're on the track. It is the right, and I, a beautiful track. I don't think I could do it without these ladies. I mean, there's, there's a push and pull with both of them, and they really keep me in line. I'm more the face. I'm more the voice. But behind it is the maturity of thinking with with Stacy, her and her and her energy, the motherly energy, uh, and then with with Grizz, there's the okay, she's like a sister to me that tells me when I'm being the jerk and tells me when I need to get back in line. Keep you in check. Keep me in check. Hey, Jordan, welcome, Jordan. I really love that about these two partners that I have. Yeah, oh, so, and they are so amazing. Stacy and Grizz, oh my gosh, I am just like, I love, I mean, I haven't gotten to spend as much personal time with Grizz, but Stacy is just, oh, love, I love you, you love your energy, and Grizz, I love, just, she makes the best reels and visuals, and she's just so right. thoughtful, and just amazing. Right. 
she claims not to have any uh, technical background or not understand technology, but I the type that. of posts it's, she it's, puts together. Well, and it's just like, it, for me, and I said this last time, but it's like, it's like just how intentional and thoughtful she is about like how she represent, like how she, like what she created from my, and how she represented it. Oh, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I feel like. I don't, like, I don't know if Stacy like is a... feeling well enough to come up. Stacy. I, I would love to bring you up if you're uh, feeling up to it. She wasn't feeling too well today. But I'd love to bring you up. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I did want to bring oh, no. this up. I just, I just, well, I love to be able to say it. Too. I always say it every time I get to see you. But like, I just, it's like, it really for me is like I get to see that because I'm tagged in it, and it's just like a memento. Like it feels like a almost like I don't want to say so much trophy, but it feels like I can look at it and just feel like somebody like saw me, and also like just the, it's just like a such a gift. So it's just like you really honor everybody with how you put so much like of your loving energy into creating those things. Like they actually really mean a lot how you design them and represent. So I was just so appreciative. And like, I almost like, like I saw it and I got like had the best day. Like I almost like teared up. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So uh, Elise, <laughs> I, we're I waiting for Stacy. if that's okay. I, don't, I, don't, I know it's getting late in your end. Oh, I really yeah, would no, like I... these two women to come up. Oh yeah, that's absolutely. Okay. No, thank you. So thank you for having me. Um, I really appreciate the me? time. Yeah, I can see you. Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, am I here? <laughs> oh, you're definitely here. Um, so yeah, thanks for having me, Luca. It was a pleasure doing readings for you and uh, and all who came up. And um, really, it is it is really my honor. Uh, it is really no, my, my honor, honor, and I. My honor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> hold on. Uh, right? You could right? Uh, no, no, with Elise, I I give up. With Elise, I give up. I I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I wouldn't battle her. I'd lose for sure. Uh, but no. um, I mean, I don't know. I do. I do go to some boxing classes. I. But I. I'm. I. I I'm not as strong as I. Appear. He's talking about getting uh, violent here. It's not even I'm where not I was going with this. <laughs> I'm just, just saying. Oh my no God! Violence here. We're peaceful people. There we are. Of hi, guys. There she is. But thank you. Oops. But oh hi, Stacy. Sure. How, How are you guys? Good. Good. How are you? I got to see you before I signed off. I just took a nice bath, like <gasps> while you guys were doing everything. Took an amazing bath. Got out. Yeah. Did a mask and. Oh, it was so oh nice. yeah, you look all nourished and like like glowing and radiant. Yum yum. <laughs> Well, I'm good. gonna I'm gonna actually go make food because it's ten o'clock and I didn't yeah. eat yet. So I'm gonna go eat. Thank you all for this. This was amazing. It was great to see all of you and I'll see you guys soon and talk to you all soon. Take care. Give me a minute, let me do the sign off real quick if I can. Yeah. Uh for those of you who aren't following Elise, our guest reader tonight, the modern mystic two two two. She's been our guest. A featured guest, and then she's also been a returning guest as a reader, I think once or this is the second time, I believe. But um, I really, really am honored that you, you had uh, the time tonight to really be our guest and do some amazing readings tonight. I do appreciate your time, I appreciate your energy, your knowledge, your wisdom, and um, I do appreciate my two moderators, Grizz and Stacy. At the bottom so of your screens, if you haven't been giving them a follow, please make sure you follow them. Stacy creates a spirit inspired jewelry. And Grizz is soon to be doing, uh, I'm going to put her out on blast, soon to be doing tower reading. So she is Whoa, learning. But she is, I'm trying to learn. She is looking for, she is looking for somebody to help mentor. We've mm -hmm. got a lot of people in the community that can help her with that. There's so many. Yeah. Yeah. Many great teachers. <laughs> Stacy, you did too, right? Yeah, I'm looking for somebody to mentor me too through it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, with that, I'm going to leave that there because I wanted them to put that in the universe, not to put it in the yes. spot, but if you're in the room. Yeah, I mean, there's so many room. people that, will, that are available. We'll talk offline. There's so many resources and everything. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, right. for joining us tonight. Thank you, Elise. Thank you. Grizz, as always, Stacy, thank you so much. And everybody in the room, don't forget to follow Elise, the modern mystic. Thank you so much, ladies.
Chris. Thanks, good night. Luca. Stacy. Hey. Good night. Bye, guys. You're very welcome. Thank you, ladies. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.